Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sawadiha, Singcau, Cumbretsu, and good afternoon to all participants. Third webinar P2A Ice Cream 2021 International Course of on Creative Media. Uh, and special welcome to participant of ICT Belmawa Ristek Dikti all international credit transfer uh, in this webinar we have two session in when in session one uh, we have Prof Paniza Almar PhD and session two we have Dendi Piawai Nastiti uh, journalist and photographer and now uh, I'm not alone in here. Uh, I have Dr. Herman Felani. Uh, Hi, <laughs> uh, he will moderate Hi. this discussion in this afternoon. Okay, uh, Dr. Herman is. Wait a minute. I will uh, read the uh, sorry uh, CV. He was born in Katahiang Bengkulu, Indonesia. He got his doctorate in 2021 and master's degree in 2010 from Gajah Mada University in the Department of American Studies. Uh, his bachelor degree was in English literature in State University of Yogyakarta in 2007. He has published books on learning English in Fun Way in the sorry, the 2011, uh, English for Communication in 2020, and Film and uh, Television Studies 2021. His research is mostly about films, intercultural education, political communication, and popular culture. He is al also active in promoting the internationalization of higher education by boosting staff uh, and student global mobility. Uh, he lives with his wife and two lovely children in Yogyakarta and can be contacted via his social media Herman Filani Tanjung in Instagram or Telegram or email at herman.filani at weeseid. Okay, uh, place is yours. Thank you very much, Desia, for the very lovely introductions. <laughs> okay, Desia, I'm glad that you still remember about me. So I would like to say hello first to our speaker. First of all, I would like to say hi to Professor Panitza Almar, PhD. Hello, Prof. Panitza. Hello, thank you. I'm really very excited to be here today. <laughs> A little bit. Okay. Okay, and uh, Zaki says hi to you. Actually, he's around. He just returned from uh, Sweden. So, and Ida also says hi to you. So, everyone in Jogja is missing you, uh, Panitza. I'm, I'm missing everyone too, and I look forward to visiting in person one, one day soon. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully, we'll meet each other. And we'd like to say hi to our uh, second speaker, uh, Mbak Denti, or Miss Bernadette Denti, Piawai Nastiti. Mbak Denti, are you already with us here? Okay, not yet, maybe. Okay, so uh, because of the time difference, Professor Paniza Almark is in Perth now, right? Paniza, you're in Perth, That's right? Correct. I'm, at Perth. In, I'm in Perth at the moment, yes. Okay, I see. So, uh, she's in Australia, where our second speaker is currently in London. Uh, Miss Dandy is, is uh, doing her study in the SOAS University of London, the School of Oriental and African Studies. So, we need to adjust with the time between Perth, Jogja, mm -hmm and also uh, London and I'm glad to uh, inform you Panizza that actually we have uh, the this course we call it P2A ice cream passage to ASEAN it's the name of our association for mobility and some uh, academic networking in Southeast Asia we call it ice cream international course on creative media 
as you can see that our stage today is a bit different <laughs> we don't want to do like another boring zoom webinar <laughs> so maybe if you can operator can you zoom out a little bit to see the whole stage yeah mas Anggi, maybe kika if you can show us the whole stage the whole angle yeah you see that we have colorful <laughs> background here we have the cushions the bean bag we have the red the red one yes and i don't want to be alone to guide the discussion that's why i hijack adesia <laughs> or manager of uh, iconisia tv to be no. with me here to be the moderator okay panisa if you uh, you don't mind allow me to read uh, a brief uh, biography about you before you come to your topic is it okay professor panisa of course okay. yes okay um professor panisa almar phd that's her name but i'm going to call her just panisa to make it easy uh, professor Vanessa Almak is a professor of visual and cultural studies. She's associate dean, uh, and I heard that you just got your full professorship, right, Panitza? That's correct. Congratulations! Yeah. That's the highest academic achievement in higher education. So proud of you. Uh, we're going to treat you good up maybe next time when you come to Jogja. <laughs> I'm always treated very well. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. She's Associate Dean uh, Arts in the School of Arts and Humanities at Edith Cowan University, Perth, Australia. Okay, and not too far from Indonesia, actually. Uh, Panitza heads the Media, Culture, and Society Research Group. She is also the Chief Editor of Continuum, Journal of Media and Cultural Studies, published by Taylor and Francis. And Panitza has also been an invited speaker and has given keynotes in the UK, United Kingdom, United States uh, of America, Australia, and Indonesia. I think you've spent a long time in Surabaya. I hope you can spend longer time in Jogja too. <laughs> in which she has discussed her work in the field of visual culture, identity, feminisms, photography, and urban space. As a photographer, she has had solo exhibition in New York, London, Italy, and Australia. And the interesting thing that I heard that most of her photo were taken using cell phone, which is very interesting. So, Panitza, um, again, allow me to give a little background about this course. This P2I ice cream is, we make it credited program. It's equal to two credits for Indonesian student and also our partners. They can convert uh, it to their uh, credit system. They need to do 20 hours of group project with their mentors and also they need to do 10 hours of general lecture including part of this course actually uh, this webinar is actually part of the course but we open it for public for the uh, for the webinar it's open for public. so not only the students so that's why we welcome also some students like here now we are participant of international credit transfer from Indonesian higher education directorate uh, Ministry of Education and Culture and the participants comes from various backgrounds they need to work in a team uh, they will have mentor they can make any creative media it could be photography could be soundscape could be uh, video vlog uh, any kind of arts that they can uh, use to express their creativity and there will be awarding and there will be a uh, we call it electronic exhibitions cyber exhibitions um, in the end of the program so this is an outcome based education and project based learning they need to work in a team and in the end we will do awarding night maybe awarding afternoon we don't know <laughs> exactly the time but they will get uh, we will award them with some prizes and the good news i heard that it will be hosted by the uh, P2A Secretariat and the one who uh, accommodate this kind of uh, activity uh, and mobility program. So, uh, Panisa, I think you're the topic that I got from the committee, you'll talk about, uh, okay, maybe I pronounce it uh, mystically, but it will be uh, photography feminine <laughs> and documentary <laughs> photography. Okay. Okay. So, Panisa, I think uh, we want to make it as easy going as possible. You can do key and a during your session. It's up to you. But in total, I'll give you one hour, uh, including key and a. Feel free to use it. Okay. 
we hope that the students can be happy you can ask them to engage uh, by speaking raising their hand or maybe chatting directly in the zoom okay let's give big round of applause to professor Alman. Hi, i'm very pleased to be here i'm just waiting to share my screen so Yes, maybe we can make uh, Professor Paniza to be the co-host. Yeah, please. This committee. Yeah, can we make... Sliding. All right. Um, can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. You can't see the screen yet. Sorry, belum masuk udah. Okay, let me just see if I can. I'll just try sharing it again. Can you see the shared screen? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not it. Yeah. It now? Yes, now. Yes, already. Oh, now right. we got it. Oh, okay. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very pleased to speak to you today on a something that's very close to me. It's about my visual work. Um, I have a background as a documentary photographer and I was a photographer before I became an academic. Um, and this is my work over many years, but it explains, it's a theory that I used and I developed when I did my PhD. And it's, uh, I titled it Photography Feminine. Um, and it's a type of documentary photography. I'll go and explain it a little bit further. So um, the word photography feminine comes from the French term écriture feminine, which means or translates to writing the body or writing the feminine body. And by the feminine, it... it, it Sorry, Panitza, could, could you do the uh, slide show? Okay, because I'm just kind of working is that the, is that working no um we just see like the first page of the slide the second slide's not coming on uh, maybe i don't know is the switch uh, maybe it's the setting of your powerpoint probably between the slideshow and the the, the presentation notes maybe it's it's swap maybe we need to swap it or i don't know Mas Anggi, is it possible to, this one is still in the, you know, not moving mode, but the slide mode is on the, on the smaller, smaller screen. screen. Okay, okay participant, participant, maybe, Milano, Milano can, can you, can you, can you tell, tell us if you can, can see that the slide, slide show is running? running? It's still. It's, it's running, running or, or not? Okay. okay. Wait, wait, wait Manitza, we will handle, handle the technical issue. Or maybe, or maybe if, you if you don't mind, if it, if it is easier, easier you, can you can send, send file a file to us, to us and then we play, and we play it here. From, from Paniza, the operator. The operator. It's out. Paniza is out okay. the... Okay, so, so uh, um, because our speaker, because our speaker is, is, has been, has been uh, expelled, uh, expelled from the Zoom room. Yes. Zoom room. Okay. Is she here? Is she here already? Paniza, are you Paniza, here, are you with, here us? with us? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. So I want so to I want to first I want first to tell, I want to tell all the participants. The participants. It's very, it's good, very to good to see you here. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to say, hi to, to say hi to all of our participants. If you don't mind, if you don't mind can you write can down, you write down the on the chat chat box? Chat box. You can write down. Write down. Your name, your name, and also also your countries, or maybe or maybe your institutions. Where do you come from? We'll be happy, we'll be to, happy see. to see. Okay. Okay. Maybe let's let's check this. Check this yeah. Can you check? Can you check uh, the chat box? Yes. 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 Wait a minute. And and those who join, those who join today, 
the webinar today. Some are some are the participants who join the course. The participants okay. who join the course. So okay. Those who join the so, course. Uh, don't forget those that who join the you course. Need to think about uh, don't forget that you need to group think project. about okay what work that your you group will project be producing okay, what work that course. you will be producing and you're going to course. meet your mentors very and soon. you're going to meet your mentors very soon and we will and we will discuss it together discuss it together uh, so that you can win so that you can win uh, one of the participants introduce ourselves yeah 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 uh, we can invite Wait. participants if you want to hmm. On cam or on cam? On voice if you're yeah. ready. Just raise your hand. Yes. Of course. Right this yeah. Uh maybe we can wait the uh, prof Paniza and then yes. uh this is Marcus call. Maybe this maybe we can say hi to uh, all of the mentors. All of the mentors, I okay. May I mention? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mr. Is Mas Masgun. <laughs> Masgun. Ah, <laughs> can say hey. Ha, okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Gun. Okay. We he's, we. He's one of the. Uh, the technical. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Vanessa, yes, welcome, back. welcome back. Uh, okay, Vanessa is in. Yeah, uh, it's no okay, Vanessa. Maybe if you have like a little technical issue, we'll help you to share the slide from here. Yes. Which one is convenient for you? Yeah, let's try again. Maybe other participant can say hello in chat box, uh, yes. Dr. Herman. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, of course, too many. Okay. We can say hi. We can say hi. I want to say hi to all of participants first. first. Oh. So, so many. So hi to Eldon from Singapore. To Eldon from okay. Singapore. Thank you, Adam. You had a very nice question in Dr. Saki's session at the time. <laughs> okay. You can mention your name and where are Country. your location now? Yes. Yes, this year. <laughs> Even if you say Indonesia, mm -hmm. Indonesian participant, they could be like any other part of the world, you know. <laughs> one in Papua, one in Aceh. Okay. And uh, Panizza, is it all right? Panizza, now? is it all right now? Um, it's coming up. Just bear with me. Um, I will see if I can share it. The mentor, we have Mas Boon there. On the screen. Okay. If you okay. can let me know if you can see anything. Okay, yes. we can it's see. On. Can you click the slideshow? All right, I'll put the slideshow on. In the. Can you see it at the moment, or not yet? It's not, not yet. coming up. Coming up. So I can just see the background of your operating system. I think it is Mojave or Catalina. Let me just try again. Yeah, let's try again. I think you can. Click the. Untick the the presenter view. I think. If I just can you oh, sorry. if I click the presenter view, then that's okay. Or well, maybe if you don't have any animations, it's okay, okay. to show it just that way. Maybe slide by slide, but just make it bigger. Maybe that's easier. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's okay. Yes, it's easier. Easier. We're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> okay. My apologies. I'll put it on the screen. No worries. My apologies.
apologies. I'm just gonna. No worry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I will begin again. So, my work, Photography Feminine Document, is a type of documentary photography that I have um, developed over the last 20 years. So, a long time. So, let's go to the next slide. So. Now, Photography Feminine comes from, it's derived from the French feminist feminine term, um, writing the body or the feminine. Um, and it's about writing the traces of the feminine body. Um, by it, it's a critique of patriarchal representation. It involves um, acknowledging one's presence um, in the um, behind the camera. So the camera is not just an isolated tool or a, or a weapon even. <laughs> the, the camera is very much part of the body, uh, bodily experience. So the person's vision, whether it's male or female, is coming through the camera lens. So it's a very personal approach. But what makes it equiter feminine is more of a critique of, of representation. It involves um, contradictions and, and dichotomies, so binary opposition. Sorry, Vanessa. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Yes, yes. Clearly. Clearly. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, what I will be talking about today, I'm not sure if you've heard a little bit about my work. And my work is Photography Feminine. It involves the French feminist term or called Ecriteur Feminine, writing the body. So that photography is a very embodied process. So whoever is behind the lens, um, their vision comes through. So it's acknowledging the person behind the lens of the camera or in, in, in terms of the camera phone. Um, so let's get to the next slide. My approach to photography is a, doc, is, is a style of documentary photography. Um, and it's in contrast to the notion of a masculine rationality, which assumes um, the Noah believes that he can separate himself from his body, the emotion. So it's a very subjective point of view. It's not about distancing yourself or using the camera to distance yourself from the subject that you're photographing. Um, and it also looks at um, the idea of writing the body comes from oh, yeah. like the writing process. Um, and it's used by a lot of feminist photographers in the 1980s, and it parallels with the style of women's writing. Um, but most importantly, the approach of photography feminine um, is about an ethical intervention. And what I mean by an ethical intervention, it's about altering perspectives, challenging perspectives, and it may come from a post-colonial or feminist perspective. So um, ethical that in the sense that there's empathy for the subject that you're photographing, that you're trying to present it in a different perspective to critique perhaps patriarchal or colonial views. Let's go to the next slide. So photography is often being termed um, um, writing with light. So the actual word photography, photo, light, and graphy, writing with light. And photography feminine is the acknowledgement that we speak from our embodied experiences, which is cultural. So our experiences, we, we're not neutral when we're photographing. There's no neutrality. Um, there's a sense of that we are bringing everything that we know, well, all our experiences come through in the kind of images that we produce, that it's not neutral, it's not objective. Um, and it's mediated through our cultural positioning. 
at. So it shares a number of similarities um, with postmodern documentary photography, such as self reflexivity, that notion that you are um, part of that image, that it is um, you acknowledging your presence there. So you self reflexive, you acknowledge your presence. Um, it's also a very strong connection or concern with power relationships. So the nature of images, how they circulated, as well as the production of images that use irony as a political device. And a lot of my work is about reframing images um, that I found on the street. So my documentary photography is very much um, linked to street photography or urban photography. So the urban space. And I look at what's around in that urban space, in the streets or in spaces that I travel um, through. And how can, I, how can I reframe the images that I find? And I will explain that further by um, showing you the photographs of my collection. Most importantly, um, it can be described as a critical, visual response to the cultural environment. And it's often a critical visual response to the media cultural environment, because the media, we live in a media saturated environment and you know, there are media images, whether they're posters, billboards, advertising signs um, throughout the urban landscape. And I'm going to start with just looking at some of my work. Um, and this was um, related to street photography, and in particular, the photographing of protests. And this work um, was taken in Buenos Aires, in the capital of Argentina, in a public square called Plaza de Mayo. And in Plaza de Mayo, um, there are a group of women, mothers, who have been protesting since um, the 1970s. And they're protesting um, for the return of their children who were taken away through the military dictatorship. They had, um, these mothers had no idea where their children um, were taken to. They march in the public square um, near the um, government buildings. So the, the main square, the Plaza de Mayo, demanding action, demanding information. And they've been doing this for um, over 40 years. So um, if you're interested, um, the article is published in Continuum. Um, and you can find out more information by reading the article. But let's start with some of the images. So, so and a lot of my images, as I mentioned, is about um, creating um, these binary oppositions or bringing together two elements. Um, in this example, you know, you see the mothers and who are also grand and some are uh, grandmothers um, protesting with their signs and um, a young child in the foreground. So it has that metaphoric um, message through in that image of the missing child, the lone child there, and the distance um, with the group of, of mothers and, and women. Um, and some of the techniques in terms of protest photography is to create an intimate lens um, and, and also acknowledge that one's presence, that you're not objective in, in the space, you're not invisible, that they know that you're there photographing and that you create an empathetic lens. Um, so yeah, some examples of the protest. Um, these images were also exhibited um, in a gallery um, with a, in a group exhibition on trauma, so visual trauma. And you know, these women especially have experienced um, many years of trauma, um, um, demanding answers and information for their missing children. And they meet every Thursday, so they protest every week. And what is interesting in terms of women and mothers, 
the bonds that they have together because they've been protesting for for many years um, they share um, commonalities there so again the focus on um, the intimacy um, the close-up lens focusing on individual women Um, another protest there, and here's an example of where I work with duality and where the poster the on the right hand side of the face is mimicked with the um, with the real person, so the real and representational, and this is one of the motifs in my work, is playing with the, or putting together the real, so a real person, and the representational, the image and bringing that together in a, in a photograph. Um, I'm going to now talk about another body of work. And this, was, this body of work was in, taken in Thailand, in Maesot, which is a border town um, on the Thai-Burma border. Um, this, these images were taken at a rubbish dump at, in May Sot, and in the rubbish dump there are, at that time, that this was 2009, there were roughly 2009, 2010, they were roughly around 28 families, around 100, 150 people living um, on the rubbish dump at that time. So they um, had tents or constructed housing which were basically tents of canvas living on the rub um, within the rubbish and then they would work to find recyclable items which they would pile together and they would be paid um, for their collection of recyclables um, they earn about at that time was about a dollar us a day for um a bag, a large bag of, of rubbish, so a garbage bag full. Um, what was interesting in this space, and these were Burmese um, refugees who had left the border, um, left the Burmese, um, crossed the border and are living on this rubbish dump. And at that time, and, and still current now, that the political situation for them was quite tense and they were facing many disadvantages there. So life on the rubbish dump is better than the life that they had in their homeland. Um, what I was interested in was the children and there were roughly about 58 children living there uh, on, the, um, on the rubbish dump. And in my photographs, um, they acknowledged my presence. So it was very, it was a very slow process in terms of photography. A lot of photo photographers and photojournalists go in very quickly, take their photographs and then leave. Um, with my approach, it was, I spent quite a lot of time getting to know the people. I also shared my camera and there are images where I've given my camera and allowed uh, or permitted or just shared, a shared is probably a better word, shared the camera so they could take photographs or whatever they wanted. Um, I was also interested in, in, and as I said, my approach is putting in, uh, is having that duality, having those binaries. And here is one child um, who found this mannequin head um, and another child with a plastic bag on his head. So I'm again playing with these, this irony, this kind of, positioning of, of, of elements within the photograph. Um, also, um, the idea that, you know, this binary opposition of a, of a small child with a white mannequin head, you know, and this is what they find as a toy. So again, it brings in these cultural issues and cultural elements into the image. And although this, this image here, it appears as a um, post image, but it's actually this child had found this poster. Oh. Um, it was, yeah, this child had found this poster mm -hmm. and, um, oh. and kind of held it up. And I was there just watching this scene <laughs> in front of me. Um, so, 
and it's and that's this is where that slow photography that you're just there and people are engaging with you um um and yeah this child is no more than two years old it was still in nappies and still in short pants um but here that real and representational comes through again um the the live child, the little, the, you know, small child with the photograph of, of the healthy, clean baby. So in a studio, it looks like a studio image poster. And then you've got the natural environment of um, the lake and bits of rubbish near the rubbish dump. So again, those contrasts, so binary oppositions, juxtapositions um, are key elements of my work. And this is more recent work. And again, as I said, I, when I, as a street photographer, um, I'm looking at, you know, what's on the street, what are the images that are there? And, um, and again, you know, play and kind of working and just seeing, um, you know, how do people interact with the images around them? And here's, you know, a small lane in, in Venice and the children just playing there. But again, using the, the images that are found in the street to create a, a meta image. Um, so this um, image um, is it actually in Singapore. <laughs> and again, playing with that notion of duality the real and the child in blur and also mirrors the um if you remember back in the days the old um, ipod ads <laughs> yeah. so the apple ads yeah. so you've got the real and representation and, uh, next i'm going to move to another project i've worked on for um for several years and it's a collection called scenes of consumption picturing shopping malls and um, which is quite an enjoyable thing because and again it's that whole echo turf and then but i photograph what i enjoy doing and but i'm also looking at it from a critical eye and looking at these urban spaces this built environment and how it's very much targeted for women but it's also very much part of the capitalist structure this photograph is one key example it's shot in the dubai mall um and dubai has these mega shopping malls very glamorous very upmarket shopping malls um and um like here again the binary oppositions between the representational the white male um the cost a french brand and, and a local person, a local woman um, walking past. So again, you've got the capitalist patriarchy, you've got the contrast between the cultural, um, cultural differences. Um, again, and another image with the real and representational, looking how um, images and posters and billboards kind of work and um, I have focused a lot of my work on, on media representations in the in the built environment and this whole approach it's a critique of patriarchal representations and the idea that if women are represented um, you know are seen as objects then you magnify it you critique it you reflect it back to the society in, in large formats and by reflecting it back where you know you know where it's around us all the time and it's so common but by magnifying it it's critiquing it so um, um this image was taken in bali so again this these images that are around that are quite when you see it in a photograph, it's quite shocking, the contrast. So this is every day um, down in Kuta. Um, these kind of images are there of women's bodies and certain types of women, not every woman, but young women, slender women in not very, in, you know, very little clothing. So kind of the, the, the eroticised body that has just become normalised in, in, um, in the street. Um, 
here's another image and this is part of the shopping mall series. Um, again, the real and representational. So we've got the glamorous um, European um, styled women with their red lipstick um, with, uh, in contrast with the local women that are shopping there. So we see these um, Western um, patriarchal style images kind of magnified in, in, a, in different cultural contexts and seen as ideals um, for, for society. Um, so that is a very much a large part of my work is looking at what are these images that are out there, you know, how, what do they say about society, how does it, in, how do people interact with it in, um, in, in, the, in, the, in the environment that it's in. Um, this is similar themes, but this is in Venice in a gallery. And what I was interested about in, in the types of paintings on the wall that um, a person, a liar, so real and representational again, um, but it's, it, it kind of plays with that, that stylized presentation of femininity um, um, that, um, you know, these ideas of women being kind of objects to, uh, on display. Um, and this woman actually looks kind of fed up with it. <laughs> that enough, her eyes are closed. <laughs> well, that's my reading. And with all images, they're open to be read in, an, in, an, in numerous ways. So, okay. This is probably one of my earliest images, but also one of my favorite images. And it was taken in Barcelona. And here we have the real and representational so also the idea of women and the night so you know the night being dangerous for women but being quite um the erotic gaze at night as well but what we have is an old woman with a walking stick and then the representation of a young erotic eroticized image of a woman so those contrasts the binary oppositions um, this is um not surprisingly, this is in Las Vegas. So we're in Las Vegas, you expect to see lots of images of brochures and pamphlets and posters of women. But again, this, I, um, this kind of contrast and um, of the male in the background and the female in the bin. So it actually is kind of suggesting this trash canning of women, putting women in the bin. And I've been asked about this image, whether I put it in there to kind of show it that way, but it actually, I was just walking down the street and someone uh, had just put it in the bin in front of me and I took the image. So it's again, just um, as a photographer, just being observant of what's around and just capturing that moment. Um, um, Henri Cartier-Bresson also talks about the decisive moment that sometimes it's the moment where all these elements work together and it's just being able to take that image or create that image at that, at that instant time. Oh. Yeah, is there a question? Okay. So I'll just go a little bit further. I think I've got about five minutes, is that correct? Okay. All right. So, um, another image, and this is in Bangkok, and again, that real and represent. Well, this is both representational, but that juxtaposition. So we have the woman on the left with a degree and her um, graduation gown and cap, and then you've got a woman on a large post in the background in her underwear. So you know. You, yeah, these two contrasts brought together. Um, um, again, you know, in Paris, but these images are everywhere. Every city that I've been to, um, there's these contrasts in the city. Kaida. Um, Kaida. Yep. Um, and, you know, as I said, um, part of my street photography is just looking at these images that I found in the street. And I have it from over 30 cities. And every city that I've been to, I find these discarded images of women. Um, so, you know, behind barbed wire on, you know, on, on the gravel. Um, it's, it's 
of rubbish, you know, so women kind of images of women thrown away and it's kind of this idea of the found object as well. So I'm going to kind of um, share with you this more, more recent project that I've been working on, which is equally political, but taking a very different um, stance. And it's looking at the, um, the Venice Biennale, the last Venice Biennale before COVID, which was the 58th Venice um, Biennale. And it was looking at this um, most controversial work, which was a shipwreck. And it was the relic of the, of the Mediterranean's deadly shipwreck, uh, which was resurrected as an art installation. Um, and the work was titled Barca Nostra, Our Boat, and it was by artist Christoph, Christoph Bouchel. And what he did was the whole ship, the shipwreck, the, the, the ship with the wreck, uh, the damaged hull, was transported to the wharf of um, 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 on the Venice Canal. So the whole ship was there outside a cafe. So it was very controversial to have this ship where over a thousand people, migrants um, had died, had drowned, <laughs> to have it as an art installation. So it was incredibly controversial. Um, the ship was placed um, the, um, on the wharf um, near the cafe at the festival, it didn't have any text with it. So if you didn't know why it was there, uh, that it was a memorial space, um, um, people were having coffee, taking selfies with it, um, it became just something um, as a spectacle. It was seen for a spectatorial consumption. Um, so it was for me photographing, so I photographed the the boat. I photographed, you see the hull on the left hand side, you see a bit of light coming through where the shipwreck, um, um, where the ship was wrecked. Um, it has been considered um, disrespectful as it is a display of a site of black, tragic black deaths for white middle class sectorial consumption. And it served as a tourist site. So, um, I wanted to do something else with the image. I thought I've taken this image and am I just like everybody else is taking a photograph of something that was very tragic for the people, for those lives that were lost. Um, and especially Venice speaks to, it's a place of, it's a port, a port city. Um, it's a place of travel, migration, mobility. And that currently it's for rich tourists to go to. <laughs> Um, where these people who were off, you know, who died on there were from sub-Saharan, um, the ship left sub-Saharan Africa, or Saharan, um, were fleeing, you know, 20 countries to get to um, safe land in, in, in Europe. So having this ship there was controversial. It was also difficult um, because it is, was a memorial space, and that's how I saw it as a memorial space. So what I did with my images, and I worked, um, I did tours, and you see that um, postcard images of Venice. So I kind of did the juxtaposition. So this is a bit more creative than your standard documentary photographs. So postcard images I um, of the tourist sites of Venice. Um, and I juxtapose that with the hull of the ship. So they speak of relics and reminders, a memento mori. Um, it's also like this tourist font, and this, you know, this idea that who's allowed in the in, in this space. Um, just going a bit further. So again, you know, so I I also have this ability to do these beautiful postcards <laughs> and I thought they don't say anything it's just a beautiful image by putting it on the on the ship of this um, tragic event um, it kind of makes you think about 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 this space this tourist space about the space of Venice um, who who would, who's allowed there who's permitted to be there and these are the sites that those track people would never see <laughs> would never get to see um, and finally, um, out of the series, um, the graffiti on the streets in Venice, which I was very pleased to find. <laughs> and I think this um, kind of works together well with, the, with that image as a final 
final kind of statement. Okay, so just to um, conclude, um, at my work is about binary oppositions. It's about inscription of what is repressed in history and culture and trying to bring it to light, photographing it, basically writing with light. And it's an attempt to disrupt patriarchal representations, um, sort of a standard representations through subversion. Okay, thank you. I'm open to questions now. <laughs> I'm just having a bit of trouble hearing, so. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Panizza, for sharing with us your works. And I will actually, I will also, it's also your activism actually in, in the yeah. world. Uh, yes in a very disruptive world with so many values. It really match our course that actually we also emphasize on the values, empowerment, and also yeah, ideological and political stand. <laughs> and I think this, this kind of genre that you have really, it, it really tries to voice the unvoiced and also to, to challenge uh, status quo and a very strong uh, dominancy of a certain ideology. Okay, so I'm not the one in the position of giving questions. I would like to read some questions. If you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. Okay, we'll give you the, the floor to ask question directly to Professor Panizza. I want to say hi to Mbak Denti too, Ms. Denti from London who has been joining us. Hello Mbak Denti, can you hear us? Hello. You can also, you, you can say hi to Paniza as well. <laughs> thank you for the presentation of Prof. Paniza. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. Marenti, it's a very good opportunity. If you have any questions, feel free also to say it now. Okay, let's wait. I got a question from Pam Pam. Uh, that's his name, Pam Pam. It's interesting to know photography feminine. Is this kind of a new photo genre or something? Yes, Panizza, maybe you can answer directly. Yes, um, the photography, it's, it's a term that I came up with. So it's um, a basis like the, the term ecriteur, feminine, writing the feminine has been around in, 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 liter in women's writing, but by using um, the photography feminine is something that I've developed. Yeah, so this is also kind of genre. You choose certain issue and certain standpoint, ideological or the values yeah. inside the work. But, yeah, right. and I think he's described it well as it's a, it's, it is activism. It's a, it, is, it is political in the statements in terms of critiquing um, what is out there. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Vanizza. Uh, questions from the participants? You can raise your hand or... But Andy, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, actually, I want to <laughs> ask um, uh, Professor Vanizza, your, uh, uh, your presentation was really, really uh, wonderful because uh, when we talk about photography, it's also, uh, it always considered as a masculine thing. <laughs> Um, but uh, how you present at the, the photography, you open our perspective about uh, women's representation. Actually, I am um, uh, curious about, um, like, uh, if you remember uh, uh, the last year, maybe when we, when we, when there is when there was a, a Black Lives Matter, people started to. Um, to to think or to to try to figure out who is behind the camera, and are they able to represent uh, um, their community or not? How about uh, uh, woman representation? Is there? Do you think is there any changes in uh, people's perspective to see 
how uh, <laughs> photography is represented by women or no? Or is there any changes of how a woman is represented in today's society? Thank you, Mr. Paniza. Thank you, Sorry, that's, Professor Paniza. Oh, okay. that's a, thank you. That's a, a, a very important question um, in terms of representation and a very good point that in the history of photography, it, it's always been male dominated so it's very masculine dominant especially in um, street photography and photojournalism certainly in the, in the last few years um, there's been a rise of women photographers presenting a feminine or feminist um, point of view um, black lives matter but also the me too movement um, where a lot of women and we're fortunate we're living in a time where um, cameras aren't expensive and most people have a camera on their phone so taking selfies and and t and uh, and using the camera and so it's it, the accessibility and also the um the internet and social media is a way of um sharing um different points of view sharing feminist points of view and sharing um women's representation yeah thank you madenti and profaniza I don't like the statement that you say, it's actually writing the body with light. <laughs> There's a question here from Mimi, I think it's our student from Vietnam, from Da Nang. Mimi said, maybe you want to say your question directly or do you want me to read it? Okay, I'll read it from Mimi. If Mimi yeah. will speak, I think it will be better. Um, yeah. So yes, please, uh, Mimi. Sorry that I cannot turn on turn on my camera. No so worry. my question yeah, my question is I think that like every photo they have the its own meaning. So however I think like whenever we took a photo it's like for a building or some kind of this. So it's related to history. Um so I wanna ask you that you have a lot of experience about the story after the photo uh, like behind the photo. So could you share with us that what is the most sensitive topic that you have ever met before yeah thank um, you and yeah thank you and thank you it's a really good question um as a photographer probably the the two key pro projects that i've had to think a lot about my process and this is the idea of self being self-reflexive and considering how i might photograph how do i picture or how do i image um uh, and how do i do it in an ethical sensitive manner and that would be um, the work um, on in Mesa, the Thai Burma border um, in the in the dump site because they were so used to photojournalists coming in and out and in and I just thought these are real people with real lives and families trying to make a living and in very difficult circumstances or what we see as difficult circumstances. So it was very important to be sensitive to try to empower those that you are photographing or working with. Um, as I as said in that project, I I gave my camera. It's like you can take photographs of what you want to, you know, and shared the, the process and the photographs that I that I um, produced at that time. I also sent back the photographs so they can see their images. So there was this kind of sharing of images so it wasn't just going away and publishing the work and they don't have any idea who who it is or what's being done with the photographs so that was that was um a really sensitive topic in how to deal with and how to approach it and the most recent series the one in venice with the the, the ship um that had sunk um with migrants so just that knowledge that you know this is um a site where so many people lost their lives in tragic circumstances trying to be a safe haven for them um, and how do I represent this sensitively and how do I make a statement you know that of, of the space and make a comment about the urban environment and what is happening globally with migrants trying to find a safe place to live. Thank you Professor Paniza. In relation to Mimi's question, I'm curious to know how do you approach your subject, you know, when you take the photo, for example, in the Plaza de Mayo, you mm -hmm. know, uh, how do you make them to, this is something 
genuine, you know, a, a real expression from them, not because they're in front of the camera. Yes, yeah. Um, at protests such as that, it is um, a little bit challenging because it's so many people, and it's but it's also um, making my presence known. So I was quite visible in there. I could speak um, um, Spanish uh, in Spanish, not not very well, but I could speak Spanish. So I would ask them to ask permission. I was like communicated with them, and in in that in those protests. Um, sites, a lot of people are there to be seen and to be photographed. Um, that is the nature of protest. People want to be seen. Um, so um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Paniza. Uh, another question from Eldon So from Singapore. Hi, Professor Almark. Thank you for your presentation. May I take the opportunity to ask, in your view, do photographs only capture a memory in the physical form or photograph as an expression of that memory in abstract form as in art? A very good question. Um, for me, um, I would say the latter, that photographs are an expression of the memory in an abstract form um, because it is quite um, uh, a, a lot of my images that I produce, uh, I take time in, in, in bringing all the elements together. So rather than just kind of snapping everything I see, um, as in memory, <laughs> um, I'm producing or creating these images or bringing to seeing and just capturing that millisecond sometimes, you know, of, of when the elements will come together, you know, people walking next to it opposed to finding these binary oppositions. So um, I, I see it as, as more of an abstract form. Okay, I think your presentation really attracts the spirit of feminism among the participants, I think. <laughs> Another question, Professor Panitza. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anggi from Universitas Islam Indonesia. If you're looking for the 90s, or uh, the 19th magazine, especially from Europe. <laughs> this thing is still happening until now. There's a lot of photography that uh, shows the woman's body, the magazines, mm -hmm. to get atten attention from the audience. And according to some journal articles I've read, it's not uncommon for women uh, to become the object of sexism. So what do you think uh, about this? Professor Armand. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, it's still happening now, and you know there are different ways of viewing the body. And for some women, they see by showing the body that they are empowered by showing their body because it's their body, and it, they're empowered by showing um, parts of their body. Um, magazines also um, focus on different elements, so they fetishize. Um, the women or women's bodies, so fetishize you know, uh, parts of the women's bodies to make it more erotic. So, and and they do become sex objects, and it's all in the. And I can when I'm in my own photography when I see these large posters, and I'm like, when I'm seeing especially advertising images and images, of, for example, in magazines, that um, is the subject empowered in the image. Who is empowered? And I suppose that's the question. Um, how much authority do they have? Are they being told to do this because this will sell more magazines or it's for the, um, what kind of consumer is it? Is it for, we, it, so there's, it's very problematic. There's very, there's a lot of different elements in terms of, of um, the projection of women's bodies. Um, and it depends on the cultural context as well um, and who's photographing. Is it, is it different having a male photographer and a woman or a woman's photographer and a woman's body? Is that, does that give you a different reading? How can you critique it? And I think um, an aspect of that is just knowing how prevalent it is and that's especially an element of my work that you see it everywhere. Um, is it really empowering <laughs> when you see it thrown in the trash or people walking over it in bins and, in, um, you know, and discarded that becomes normalised? 
Um, so I suppose the question of empowerment. So you know, you know, which um, or is it you know, sexism or sexist? Thank you, Professor Panitza. I think from your lecture we can learn later to identify which photo has the element of male gaze, tourist gaze, or empowerment, <laughs> or yeah, to it's voice it's the unvoiced. And I think um, part of it, like, as we understand with photographs, um, the context matters. True. So what context it's, it's in. Um, so we take one image and move it to a different context. Does it have, give it a different meaning? Yes. Um, so this is a very nice word from Eva Fernandez from our YouTube. She said, thank you, Panizza, for your great work and compassionate and empathic process. So, uh, Panizza, I'm really sorry. Finally, it's the time that limits us. We hope you can stay to join a uh, dentization letter. And I would like to give this token of appreciation for you. Can you see it? <laughs> I can see it. It's, you. it's, your, it's your camera, mm -hmm. oh, wow. but I can only give it when you come here. <laughs> Well, so this I this wooden camera represents uh, our honor to your yes uh, great work, uh, passionate, empathetic, and also you know uh, empowering works. Thank you very much. Very thank much you, Benita. <laughs> Sama sama. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you for joining us, and we would like to take a one photo session with you if you don't mind virtual photo session so participants if you would like to join the photo session with professor panizza please turn on your camera okay okay desia are you ready <laughs> desia can you help <laughs> to count okay uh, okay maybe uh, okay. seven page <laughs> seven page oh come on okay i'll just count one two three what until <laughs> one until twenty maybe <laughs> one two three Keep your smile. Four, <laughs> five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. ten. It's ten. <laughs> it's ten. <laughs> <Why>? Twenty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Professor Panis Almark, if you don't mind, please stay. But if you have another activity, it was delighted to have you here. And warm yeah. regards. Uh, and some people say they miss you here. We miss you, of course. I, I, I <laughs> miss <Indonesia. everyone>. <laughs> <laughs> You've been missed. I think Ida is waving her hand for you. Thank you, <laughs> Yes. We'd like to continue with the n next speaker. We have uh, Mbadenti with us here. Thank you, Paniza. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you soon. Okay, Desia. Okay. So. Next we continue session. now, and it was very nice to have very interesting Professor so Panitza with us. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to be a feminine photographer too? <laughs> Maybe I will try it. You should try. You should have like a stand when you make something, right? Yes, when you of course. do creative work, not only something to get money, but something with values. Empowerment. <laughs> yes, exactly. Kay. That's the word. And also, it's slogan of our department, actually, communication okay. department. <laughs> uh, communication same. for empowerment. Okay, Madenti, how are you? <laughs> Hi, hello, I'm freezing here. Oh my god, what's the temperature <laughs> in London? Um, it's 7, I think. Oh in god. Celsius? Oh no, it's about 11 uh, degrees Celsius here. Okay, I see. I hope you have your long john and everything that make you warm there. Thank Maybe you, you don't need ice cream now. <laughs> what you need is hot chocolate. <laughs> okay, let me read first the short bio of uh, Mbak Denti, Miss Denti. Her full name, a beautiful name. Okay, I'm sure you cannot memorize this. Bernadette Denti Piawai Nastiti. Okay, I'm not going to explain the meaning. The, now she's studying in continuing her study in the School of Oriental and African Studies in London. Now we just call it the SOAS University of London, right? We don't read the acronyms anymore. Uh, she is a Sevening Scholarship Awardee. 
Congratulations. That's very tough, right, Madendi? <laughs> Competitive scholarship. Um, she's a journalist. She's a writer and a photographer, uh, mostly based in Jakarta, Indonesia. She had a strong interest in writing news stories and working on photography projects that promote gender and social equality, pluralism, and multiculturalism. I think you can say high five to Professor Panizza. <laughs> you have the same interest. Sorry, it's my apps in my laptop. Um, in 2018, she received European Union Award for journalists in Indonesia for her articles and also her contribution in raising awareness on the rights of the persons with disabilities. Wow, again, empowerment. Empowerment. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Madenti, I think we we'll, let's manage the time uh, flexibly. We have about one hour, I think, more or less. So the screen and the virtual space now is yours. We hope that you, you've you. been made as co-host. Maybe committee? Oh, yeah. it's done. Yeah. OK, can you hear my voice? Loud and clear. clear. Is everything all right? OK. Hello, everyone. Good morning from London. How are you? Morning. Uh, I'm pleased to be here. Thank you for Professor uh, Paniza for your presentation. Um, it was nice to be here again to meet some of you. Uh, even though we are continents apart and maybe we have a different time zone, but thank you for technology for helping us to connect uh, one by another. Uh, before I started, I wanted to know how many of you would like or who love taking pictures. Maybe you can give thumbs up in the screen if you love taking pictures. I want to see. Okay, some of you, um, I believe that some of you love taking pictures. And today, in today's presentation, I want to share not only how to take pictures, but also how to develop uh, your story. And um, today, um, okay, let me share my, pre uh, my screen first. Okay, so today I would like to share about how to make a personal photo story. Creating a photo story is really interesting because uh, we can share our personal and diverse uh, story that haven't created by uh, any other uh, professional photographers. Okay, before we started, I want to uh, introduce myself. My name is Denti Piawenastiti. You can call me Denti, but please don't call me dentist because I'm not a dentist. As uh, the moderator said that I am a journalist and currently I'm living in London. Um, I've been working as a journalist for many years. Um, uh, in Compass Daily, one of the largest uh, and oldest medias in Indonesia. Um, and as a journalist, I have assigned in different desks, um, including politics, economics, um, sports, what else, um, cultures. And um, in 2017, I published a photo book entitled Pangi di Timur Tengah. Uh, that tells story about uh, mutual and uh, about diversity in Jerusalem and Bethlehem. That was uh, my first time I realized that photography has a power to change people's perspective. So during the last three years, um, I'm not only focusing myself on um, writing uh, process, but also in taking pictures. Um, I put down my uh, Instagram account and my email address. Please uh, don't. Uh, uh, please feel free to message me or to drop me a DM for um, for further for, uh, for further communication. So what we are going to discuss today 
actually I don't uh, really want to share uh, many about theory, but I will uh, use this opportunity to share my latest uh, work in photography. Uh, there are three I want to share uh, to you, uh, pictures about uh, mental traveler, Lenggak Lenggak London and Revisit Luton. And I will also share my lesson learned during uh, my activity in photography. So uh, what does photo, uh, photo story means? Uh, in the screens, I, I read that photo story or photo essay, for, or photo essay means repres, uh, presenting an international use of pictures into a story. So we are lucky that we are living in the world that full of potential story. Wherever we are going, there is always a story to tell to people. A story um, can be a big occurrence or phenomenon, but also it can be something uh, simple, something related to us or about people uh, living around us or about the place that we love most. So a photo story can be anything um, that we can tell or we can share to people. But also, uh, we wa I want to uh, ask you to also ask a question about what is a photo story, uh, how uh, what makes a photo story become a great or a good photo story. Now I want to share you uh, my latest work about um, people who live in mental illness. So this, uh, this series of picture is particularly relevant uh, of for you who experience depression, anxiety, or fear. I choose this story because during the pandemic time, I experienced a mental condition. After I talked to um, some of my friends, uh, actually they are uh, they experience the same thing. So um, in this project, I, sh I am making a photo story related to mental illness. This is Saiful Huda, uh, a person who di diagnoses with uh, bipolar, bipolar and borderline personality disorder. As a person with mental illness, uh, Itong uh, or Saiful Huda used to have a sleeping disorder, anxiety, mood swing, fear, impulsive, and always made unexpected decisions. He told me that he used to have uh, three days of sleep loss or he can stay in bed for days. So in this picture, I tried to capture his emotion and struggle to get through uh, of his depression. Um, Saiful Huda was diagnosed with a uh, mental illness since 2017. At that time, he described his life as a chaotic. This is a messy room where he usually left. When I came to his room, actually I was shocked to see all of his, uh, his stuff uh, sketchers in everywhere. He said that Benty let me uh, clean up my room first. So uh, at that time it was noon and he just up to see all of his belongings or stuff uh, fall apart in everywhere. It's like a scattered memories, the messy pieces that, uh, of life that he, he is trying to put it back together. Itong felt the symptoms uh, since he was in junior high school, uh, but during that time, no one uh, talked more talk much about a mental illness. So as he gets older, the symptoms become more intense. After he was diagnosed with mental illness, he takes treatment that can control uh, his emotions. His medical routine and consultation with the doctor help him uh, to be more peaceful and to heal himself. Experiencing a mental illness is like a journey with a series of stage. The journey to heal himself is not easy. Even after undergoing treatment, there, there are times when anxiety arises. So sleeping disorder um, also make him tired. 
This picture was taken when he was asleep uh, in his office. So, uh, but Itong said that he is lucky because he is surrounded by friends and family. Um, as a person with mental illness, Itong experienced social stigma and financial problem. However, he got full support of his family and friends that helped him to keep going on. This picture is about uh, Itong with his family, with his father and sister and brother-in-law and Liz that support him unconditionally. The last picture I want to share is a smiling face of Itong. Um, living as a person with mental illness, uh, often see as a helpless. Uh, Itong struggling show us that uh, with a right treatment, with support uh, with his family and friends, he can him he can heal him uh, himself. So uh, what I want to share uh, to you is we can use series of pictures to uh, to tell story about a person who are living in around us. The next picture uh, I want to share is uh, my latest, also my latest um, photography project, which called uh, Lenggak Lenggok London. So Lenggak Lenggok is an uh, Indonesian term. It means that a body's movement uh, in dancing and uh, walking. So as you, uh, as most of you know that currently I'm living in London. Um, I, I, arrived, I arrived here about a month ago and coming from Indonesia that was considered as a UK red release country, I was required to do 10 days uh, hotel quarantine. So it means that I had to stay in hotel uh, for 10 days. They provide me with uh, food and with uh, drink and I was allowed to go to outside of the room for 15 minutes to get some fresh air, fresh air. At the first 10 and second days, I, I felt fine. Like it's okay to stay inside to chill or to watch, uh, to watch a Netflix. But uh, after that, I feel the boredom. Like um, I, I remember I was sleeping um, on the floor, looking up uh, to the, to the roof and thinking what I'm going to do uh, today to, to kill my time. Uh, after spend days, uh, spend days uh, doing nothing, I started to look at the window um, and I saw London citizens walk, uh, to walk across the pedestrian area. Uh, staring at them walking is like watching a fashion show because they are dressed up in a very beautiful uh, clothes. And I saw them as a model and also the pedestrian area becomes a, a red carpet for them. And I'm a, the spectator watching them through my window. So my window becomes um, um, become the screen to watch the uh, fashion show. So my imagination helped me to get through uh, of the frustration <laughs> during, the, uh, during the quarantine days. So I started to take pictures of them uh, walking in the pedestrian area. So for me, it's like watching a... Uh, um, Fashion show because everyone wearing a different clothes, nice clothes. Uh, so also in this picture, I want to share that even though we have a limitation, kind of limitation, um, like stuck in a room uh, with very limited activity we can do or uh, very limited things uh, that we can see, but still, uh, using our creativity and imagination, we can create uh, pictures and we can make a photo story. Okay, uh, the last uh, pictures, a series of pictures I want to share is about a uh, revisit Luton. So um, it was 11 years ago when I was visited UK for the very first time. 
at that time I was selected to join a global exchange by British Council. So uh, Luton is located uh, 30 minutes by train from London. Um, there I was stay like for 10, day, uh, 10 weeks. And that was the first time I met people with uh, very diverse backgrounds. I made friends and family. And also uh, it was my first time to, uh, uh, to, to know about the global, uh, uh, global world. So um, I'm lucky that I can manage myself to revisit Luton again. So uh, revisit a place that you have been to is like uh, revisit your, your play, uh, yourself. So you see about, is there any changes in the place? Uh, is, there, is there any uh, new building there? Is there any change? And also you learn about, is there uh, during the 10 years, have you changed yourself? Or maybe I'm just the same person. So um, revisit a place that you have been to is like for me, re, uh, revisit myself. So I print out all the pictures that I have um, and I started to make a juxtaposition and trying to compare the pictures, uh, the old pictures I have with the actual uh, situation now. Okay. And this is me like 10 years ago. So um, from, uh, from the experience I have, like uh, I want to share to you about how to create an engaging photo story. So the first of all, we have to find the story itself. As I told you before, that we are so lucky because we are living in the world that have a full of potential story. Wherever we look, something is going on. Uh, it has a potential story to tell to people. So if we want to create a photo story, uh, please figure out what the moment uh, we want to share, what the memory we want to retell. Do you want to tell a story about your childhood memory or a place that you are growing up or a beautiful and interesting places that you love the most? Uh, consider some basic question to help you uh, figure out about the story like, uh, what, why do you love this place? Um, and what makes the place is different with another place you have been to? So the basic question help you to find the story. And also uh, ident identify the audience. Uh, who is the audience for your photo story? Do you want to keep it just for you? Or do you want, uh, or probably others will look at this it's it's only um do you think it's only for local or it could be uh, international publication if it is for a global public publication think about how uh people who live uh, uh, far away from your place have uh um have a uh, can relate or interest with your story. If you want to make a photo story for local publication, also think about what makes your story different with the local photographers or the local publication. Or do you want to publish it uh, only for you, yourself? So thinking about your audience and publication will help you to create and plan your photo story. And also decided uh, the order. This will help you to figure out how to tell your story. You can tell story in chronolo uh, chronological order or by associating uh, different events or, or in my presentation, the first uh, approach I use is a portrait when I take pictures about my friend who living in uh, mental disorder. Or in Revisit Luton, I use juxtaposition concept, placing two things uh, together to show a contrast or similarities. So there are lots of creative ways to tell a story. 
Okay, uh, I have been working as a journalist for um, eight years now. Uh, I saw, I observed that um, media nowadays become very inclusive. Not only journalists or photojournalists who can create photo story and publish their work, but also uh, everyone can uh, press your shutter button and share your pictures. So, um, uh, to closing today's uh, presentation, I want to um, encourage you guys to take pictures and to start to develop your story and to publish your story because if we have more uh, personal and diverse uh, story to tell to people so we can learn uh, one by another. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, my presentation and please, um, if you have any questions or comments. Thank you very much, Manetti, for sharing with us. I think it's really inspiring. You use photography as tools to know each other, to learn about each other, to learn about human. And I really like the practical tips that you say find the story, identify the audience, and decide the order. Okay, I think it will be very helpful for the participant of this course to use it uh, when they plan their project. Okay, I think I already s see one hand raising. Okay, Fahri Aditya Zeri. Uh, you must be excited to ask Mbak Denti. Please, Fahri, you can state your questions concise and to the point. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Herman, and thank you also uh, for uh, Badendi for uh, for the topic. It's really interesting. First of all, I wanted to appreciate your second topic. Uh, even though even though you still stuck in your room, you still tell your story. It's really great. Uh, and for the other, my question about your uh, first topic that tell the story of of a guy that have a mental illness is it uh is it really necessary like if we tell the story about uh a person maybe uh let's say maybe said like like you like you have the photo needs a bit uh some effect or edited like uh like before you you explain about the a guy that have a mental illness you use uh you display the photo using a little effect like uh a soft shadow of uh, his and his shadow that smile like that or maybe if I want to tell a story of uh, happiness maybe it needs a colorful uh, col colorful uh, color like a bright color like that maybe that's all thank you you can respond directly by no, no yep. problem uh, oh. okay. So how Thank important you, is Fahri, like the editing? For... Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you hear me? Thank you, Fahri, for uh, the question. So you are asking me about my approach uh, in taking pictures for my first project. So uh, yeah, when I when I um, I decided to take pictures about a mental illness, actually that's a uh, come from my uh, my experience uh, during the pandemic we we experience uh, in the pandemic uh, live in isolated and we cannot talk uh, or meet people in person and for me as a journalist that i used to meet people every day it kind of uh, make me like uh, being alone so that i use uh, my personal experience and I decided to take pictures about mental illness. And I met with uh, Saiful Huda, uh, who are uh, who are agree to uh, to share his story. So when I started to uh, to decided to uh, make a 
for the story about mental illness, I'm thinking about what approach I want to use. Uh, yeah, as you said that I, I use uh, some kind of effects like uh, moving his head or um, I put uh, several pictures together. Uh, that's, uh, that's the approach that I use, uh, that I intentionally use to tell the story. Because when we uh, talk about menta mental illness, um, we cannot, uh, for me, uh, I cannot like take pictures people like uh, in in uh, in portrait uh, in the usual portrait because I want to tell about something deep, something inside his mind. So like uh, creating uh, some effect, uh, I want to make uh, the the audience can feel what uh, the the subject feel or thing also in the same uh, he thinks. Um, also, I I uh, I also decided to choose um, black and white photography rather than the color because uh, if you pay attention to the uh, to the pictures, um, black and white it's not only a black and white color. It has uh, multi layers. It has grays. Uh, even the black has a uh, uh, different layers of blacks and white so it feels like uh, I feel it's like a human's condition when we are happy it doesn't mean we don't have any other kind of feelings or emotion in ourselves when we are sad uh, also we have different emotion we have also angry we have also happiness there so it's like um, human uh, humans emotions and feelings is very very multi layers. So using uh, that kind of approach, I, I intentionally choose is to um, to share uh, the story and also to to make uh, the audience can feel uh, this in the same way uh, to the subject um, cognition. I hope it answer your question, Fahri. Thank you very much, uh, Badenti. So uh, I get the point. That uh, your not your your purpose is really wider than just I thought. It's not just to tell to tell the story, but also want to make the audience feel deeply from the from that story. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Fahri. So picture speaks a thousand words, and not only what is seen there but it's also mental and abstract message uh, behind the photo so um, there's a feedback from professor panitza almark but then she said that uh, your techniques are a great visual techniques and she will definitely use it <laughs> and the other one is from okay this is from eldon saw from singapore uh, he said I particularly enjoyed uh, the juxtaposition technique where Nastiti Badenti compared a printed photograph against the same background in the said photograph. I think the fact of temporal change that is accentuated by this comparison is haunting. Do you have any, it's, it's more like a comment but for example Badenti, I know that here we have so many friends for example from Cambodia they visited Angkor Wat again and again because it's it's free for the Khmer people, for example. But if they take photo and then they come again, they use your technique. I think they will see that they will see themselves in the picture, right? <laughs> or maybe you have a we have us also some student here from Da Nang, Vietnam, for example. The 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 Dragon Bridge is there uh, all the time. But if you take the picture, Mimi, hi, maybe <laughs> you will say it's you will see that uh, there is a change within you, not the bridge, probably. <laughs> okay. Marinti, do you like, do you want to say uh, something related with this comment? Yeah, thank you, uh, Ald Aldonso from Singapore. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's that also uh, uh, a technique that I intentionally use. So before I arrive in the UK, I print all the pictures I have. Um, well, uh, actually, I have uh, all the pictures in my hard disk, uh, 
but when I arrived in the UK, all the uh, the harvest is broken, and I I started to think, oh, uh, it's uh, I started to thinking the the valuable of the pictures or the valuable of the old pictures we have because we can uh, create uh, something new. So before I arrived in the UK, I uh, contact my friends to ask the pictures and to print it. And when I started to revisit the place I've been there, I feel like, uh, um, I don't know, it's kind of, I feel like uh, the place is still the same and different at the same mm -hmm. time. Uh, actually, some some of the places I've been there, I don't remember about the place or what I I used uh, I what I did there, like the last pictures uh, about me in in front of the building. Actually, I didn't remember what what I was doing there, but the pictures tell me that I've been there. And uh, to revisit the place, I feel like um, all the things is the same and different at the same time and also um, I found that UK uh, is really nice and it's really good in preserving the buildings or the the places there maybe if we revisit Indonesia in the place that we've been to maybe the building or everything there is changes uh, in 10, 10 years but in the UK uh, some of the place they keep it all the same so it also shows uh, how they preserve their cultures and the buildings. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madenti, for the elaboration. Especially in Jogja, we'll be shocked, you know. For example, I've been living here for 20 years. If you go to Tugu Jogja or Malioboro, it's like totally like a new, totally different place. <laughs> so like you said, yeah, it's true. Sometimes it's it's we can reflect back to what is happening around us by looking at in our photographs. Okay, I'm going to give the opportunity for the audience to ask questions, if you still have any questions. Uh, Desia, do we have any questions in the chat or mm. maybe in the YouTube? The YouTube maybe not yet. Yeah, I think there's a... Maybe good... There's a follow-up from Eldon. She said, he said, I think the idea of revisiting place once travel is warming. Perhaps it's about trying to understand our past selves, that feeling of nostalgia that we indulge in and recalling. Perhaps our uncertainty for the future now, that we are in the future from the past. Okay, this is very philosophical, but it's, it's true. It's a tool for self-reflection. Okay, Madenti, do you have any uh, feedback for this? Mm -hmm. It's good. You take no, picture, but, but actually, it's <laughs> for looking back at yourself, right? Yeah. No. Uh, but actually, I still have uh, several pictures that I want to revisit the place. And um, last week, I went to Cambridge and to the uh, to do the same thing to take pictures that I have been to. And I don't remember the place, so it's a funny story because I don't remember the place, but I have the pictures. And when I show it to the local um, citizen there, they are more exciting to me to uh, to look at the picture. And they said, "Oh, this is ten years uh, pictures." And uh, he called his friends, and he started to look at my pictures, and they helped me to find the place. <laughs> so. Uh, how to take these pictures is also help me to connect with people who are living there, to have True. conversation and to talk about um, how the place they are living has changes and they said that the place uh, are different but for me it's totally the same and mm -hmm. also uh, I don't remember the place but I have the pictures so it's really interesting uh, using uh, even using this technique, I can uh, gain more experience. So, revisiting a place that we have been to uh, give us more experience. Interesting. So, you're not only connected to yourself from the past, but also you get connected with the people around the area where mm. you take the photo. But one challenge, Madenti, I think the challenge is less and less people develop their photos or <laughs> they print it out. The, the, the the photograph that they have in their phone, they just keep it in 
cloud drive, mm -hmm. you know, Google Drive, OneDrive or something else. But I think it's, it's a good idea that we need to print it out. Okay, we still got time, right, uh, this year? Uh, another 12 minutes for Q&A. Yes. Oh, okay, there's a question here from Prah, from Czech Republic. <laughs> Okay, this is from Mas Ali. Uh, our oh lecturer is now continuing his study mm -hmm. in uh, Prague, uh, Czech Republic. The question is, maybe this is both for Prof. Panitza if he's if she's still here, and Badenti. How to approach and convince a person with mental illness mm. to be the subject of photography? This is regarding with the ethical issue and etc. Thank you, Mas Ali, for the questions. Stay warm in Prague. <laughs> Please, Madenti. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. As um, Professor Peniza said before, that when we are taking pictures, we cannot just come to the place or to the meet, to meet uh, to the people, and we grab our pictures and uh, taking their pictures. We have to have kind of um, feeling to. Um, to oh, what is it? to um, to know that people have their privacy and to understand to respect people. Sorry, yeah, mm -hmm. to respect people. So the first thing when we are take uh, we when we are um, planning to uh, to take pictures, we have to mm -hmm. consider about um, uh, people's uh, privacy and to respect them. So what mm -hmm. I use um, uh, before I taking pictures uh, about Huda, I met him personally um, not only once, like three times or four times to uh, have discussion with him uh, and to ask him question to know more about mental illness uh, mm -hmm. and to know more about his feelings. And I tried to convince him by saying uh, and telling him about uh, what I'm going to do with the pictures, like what approach that I'm going to do and also uh, where I want to publish the pictures. So he knows the whole idea of me taking his pictures. And also I asked him uh, about, do you mind if I show your face? Because mm -hmm. it's also okay if he rejected me or he, uh, he don't want to to show his face in the pictures, I totally understand because not all uh, people with mental illness they want to share uh, their stories or they to show their face. So, uh, but uh, Huda said that it's okay. Uh, I'm agree to be published. So um, it takes time. We cannot like come to. Uh, his place and strategic to pictures. We need to dialogue and communicate and to respect. And also, I uh, um, I believe that my pictures is not only my pictures. is um, is a work together between me and Huda as a subject. So it's not about me taking his pictures, but it also. Um, uh, the result is uh, is from uh, discussion of both of us and how we can create these pictures so it's not my um my personal photography it's not uh, uh the photography is not coming uh, from myself but it's the result of discussion of from me and his as a subject thank you madenti um do you also talk to the family or like if they have like guardian <laughs> Um, yeah, I talk with uh, he, with his friends and family because when he has um, uh, when he feels like anxiety disorder or something, he has um, contact to to talk about his condition. So I also talk with them, also with the doctor mm. and his <coughs> friends. Thank you, thank you, Madenti. I think the ethical issue is important because we want to deliver a very important message and i think uh, like you said it's not only about it's it's not your photo only but you have a message behind mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. also part of your subjects uh, s message to the people right to the public okay uh, mm. i'm still expecting the questions okay. from participants or comment 
you still have about seven minutes. Um, maybe. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there was a question. No, from. the question was from. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, from Mazaki. <laughs> okay, from YouTube. She said, warm regards to Panizza and also the next speaker. Maybe some I. Yes, I think there is a question. It's from very interesting if we uh, talk about a mental illness and photography, yes, sir. And then uh, maybe um, Mbak Denti, maybe same approach with photo documentary between the mental illness photography. And uh, we, how to say? Combine? Y yes, because uh, mental illness is very difficult to, uh, how to say, the cut. To, to get approach, to approach yes, the subject. Yes, to approach the, the object. Is it the it's same? It's sensitive. Same sensitive. Hmm. Photo how documentary, how photo story mm -hmm. for the issue of the mental illness. So Desi, I was asking whether we can use the same approach mm -hmm. for, f like in photo documentary, mm -hmm. and also photo story mm -hmm. for this kind of mm -hmm. issue, like mental mm -hmm. illness issue. Uh, to approaching people. Mm -hmm. I think approaching people is can be applied in any kind of uh, mm -hmm. photography. Um, uh, photography. I mean, Zahra, yeah. when you, you know, mm -hmm. if you taking pictures in sports, you have to know uh, the athletes. Yeah. If you mm -hmm. taking pictures about um, about anything about documentary or, or journalism, you have to respect people. So I think uh, respecting people is applied in mm -hmm. any kind of yeah. uh, photography. Yeah. Um, and that's also how we respect people. Just imagine that if we are standing here or sitting here and someone coming and take our pictures, we, mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. like get angry about what you are doing. So that's True. also uh, what the other people uh, mm -hmm. think about themselves. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have. Uh, there are two questions here. Uh, yeah. I think. You can answer it directly. We can read it on the chat. Yeah. Uh, for Pambudi. Um, um, yeah. It's kind of manipulate. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that's true. Uh, I mean, um, it's different. Uh, like photo journalism and photo essay or photo uh, story. In photo essay and photo story, we can think deeply about what. Uh, the story we are going to tell people and we are think deeply what kind of approach that we are we want to tell to people uh, so there uh, in photo story we have different kinds of approach by photographer whereas in photo journalists because they they have very limited time and they have to tell uh, the people uh, about the phenomenon or the occurrence as it is so they don't have create like um, a creative like uh, yeah they have of course creativity but it's very limited due of the time and everything uh, so in photo story if you um, quote in quote manipulate it's fine as long as you state it to the audience so you tell the audience about kind of um, approach that you use so people will understand about how these pictures is taken yeah or we can say that Fiction and non-fiction is like a genre. Photojournalism is mm -hmm. more like a non-fiction, and photo story could be. Uh, sorry, uh, journalism could be non-fiction, and photo yeah. story could be fiction, right? I mean, as long as you state your mm -hmm. approach uh, to the audience, like uh, in like in the juxtaposition, I told the audience that this is the old uh, pictures I taken. 10 years ago and I compare it with the, the current situation. So I tell the people uh, to the audience how this uh, picture is taken by telling uh, the audience about uh, how the picture is taken and what approach do you use. So peop, uh, the audience will get the, the whole information of the pictures, not only seeing the pictures, but also understand the, compos uh, the approach that you are using. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank I you, Madendi. The second it. question. And also, yeah, and for the risk, uh, Rizky Wahyudi, um, 
we have a problem when we we share the pictures maybe it's different with people's uh, perspective or uh, the audience maybe have different idea about the pictures so to solve this problem i uh, i can uh, suggest that you also not only making pictures but also you are writing narratives so the photo story is uh, become complete and you can tell the story uh, if you are also using uh, text or narrative like in my photo book uh, i have photo book here uh, pelangi di timur tengah it's not only a series of pictures but also i tell them about uh, they also have text so the text help uh, people to understand more about the picture so we can have the same pages in understanding the pictures so it's a combination of writing say essay or maybe a prose and a picture right but it is a, to strengthen That's the message true. of the story yes. yeah thank you Manendi. i think one one thing for sure we cannot make everyone happy right <laughs> So everyone has their own interest on certain issues, so it's okay. Just speak up your message, Mr. Rizky. You don't have to worry whether people will be interested with the idea or not. But but then they make a very clear point that actually you can y strengthen it with the verbal or the narration, right? Okay, very interesting. So uh, I would like to invite another, maybe one last question or comment from the participants okay I think we're good okay wow okay <laughs> there's a question but it's a direct message to me um, but anyway, the question is thank you very much for your presentation the presentation was amazing and really inspiring for me this is from Arsila I catch that photo story is how we can tell stories through the visual realm that is conveyed through the image we present. If that's the case, what if our audience interprets our photo stories in different interpretation? Is it okay? If our audience have their own interpretation, so how can we measure that our visual work gives the audience the interpretation that we intend? And what are the tips from you to make our photos uh, to be able to convey stories that match our intention yeah um, maybe it's like the previous questions uh, actually we cannot control what people's um, what people think about our mm. pictures but what we can do is to communicate or to dialogue uh, the pictures in uh, certain ways that people can grasp the ideas so using uh, pictures, the combination of series of pictures, also narrative, uh, it makes us, um, it makes the story that we are going to emphasis become more clear. So it's not only about the pictures or the visual itself, but also uh, it needs a narr narrative, it needs text to help people understand about the pictures. And it's okay if if uh, people or the audience have different um, different uh, perspective or different idea or different uh, meaning that uh, with what we are going to say because yeah as, as we understand that people can have different perspective and we cannot control uh, people's mind but we can dialogue it or communicate it in the best way as we can thank you Madinti. I remember it, please correct me if I'm wrong, but once Roland Barthes say that the birth of the reader is the death of the author. It means that when a work is already published, it's up to the audience to interpret one work. But Inti, I'm afraid this is the end of our sessions. I would like to give you opportunity to give like closing remark to motivate, uh, especially the partisan of the P2A ice cream. Uh, they can you know work on their project very soon and we hope you can also attend our exhibition in the end of the course and Prof Manizatu if you are still with us uh, please Madendi 
Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity once again, and thank you for everyone who are coming to uh, today's uh, course. Uh, as I said uh, before, that life is full of potential story. So tell your story uh, because uh, we can learn and we can um, um, understand the world in better way if we uh, can see more pictures about the about uh, the story uh, around us. And also, um, um, don't think that we have such a limitation. I believe whatever limitation is, uh, just be creative and uh, do your imagination to create pictures. If you don't have a professional camera, you can use your mobile phone. Yep. Even if you are stuck in the place, you can still create a pictures. So yeah, thank you, and um, I can't wait to see all the pictures you are created. Yay, <laughs> Madenti, Desia, maybe you need to show. This is your camera too, Madenti. It's a wooden <laughs> camera from Jogja. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's yours, but you have to get it in Jogja or maybe while you are in Jakarta, <laughs> and the tumbler from our faculty. Panizza <laughs> too, actually. Maybe we can take a picture. Yeah, can we take a virtual photo photo session with you, Miss Dendi, if you don't mind? Maybe okay, Prof. Like Panizza. Yes, and still with Professor Panizza, if, if she's still with us. Everyone, all of the participants of Please. P2A Ice Cream. Okay, all of my students. And also the participant of ICT, International Credit Transfer of Belmawa, Ristek Dikti. Okay, let's take photo together. This year, mm. now we're going to mm. count mm. down from 20 to 1. 6 pitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 16. Is that your favorite number? Okay. 16, 15, 16. smile. <laughs> Don't forget to smile, it's ice cream. 14, uh, 13, 12, 11, 10, 10 9, nine, 8, 7, <laughs> 6, Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madenti. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay warm. Hi from everyone here, from Mas Gunawan, from all of the friends who knows you very well. Good luck with your study. And we have some announcements for all of the participants of P2S Cream after this. So please stay for a while. Madenti, thank you so much. Thank you Professor so much, Panizza, thank you so Ms. Denti and Prof. Paniza on the session. Yes. Yeah. Okay, sampai jumpa, Madenti ya. Thank you. Sampai, sampai jumpa di Jogja. di Jogja. Nanti kita minum kopi kelotok bareng-bareng. Iya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, okay. everyone. Thank you, everyone. So that was the end of our uh, general lecture for this topic. And again, after this, I would like to invite all of the committee. Okay. Oh, sorry. I need to <laughs> switch camera. I have too many cameras here. Okay. I want to invite all of the the, the participants this year, right? Yes. Uh, for the P2 ice cream, uh, please join the WhatsApp group that we already shared to you the link. Okay. If you have problem, you can contact us here. Uh, you can send us message, and then you will work together with your teammates in yes. the pro in the group. And you will meet your mentors. I mean, uh, are we going uh, to show the link of the group, the grouping? Maybe or later. Okay, just just join the WhatsApp group. Yes, uh, stand so by <laughs> in your WhatsApp and group. And we know that some some students in some countries they don't use WhatsApp. Mm, For example, maybe they use we can uh, share the link. Uh, yes, we'll share the link. So maybe for the easy communication of this course, yes, of so course. we'll be happy if you can mm -hmm. install WhatsApp for a while. Yeah, some students they use messenger or mm -hmm. maybe line. In Thailand, mm -hmm. mostly is line. Yeah. But Vietnam, for example, or Philippines. We can use email, maybe. Uh, yes, email is Zoom also fine. Zoom okay. for the meeting and later. Thank you for everyone for joining these sessions. For the next webinar, we're going to have two we speakers have from UUM, from University of Utara Malaysia, of and from Duitan University Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me give you a little spoiler for this. Spoiler. Okay. The spoiler is from the UEM, we are going to have Dr. Azira Hussein from Skimpa, from Skimpa. School of, School uh, of Creative, Creative. Uh, Media and Industry. 
she'll talk about uh, AR Confo Photo, uh, UUM experience in virtual convocation. Yes. This is Maybe the real I practice. Never hear the Confo Photo. Yeah, it's it's like graduation ceremony. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's virtual, mm -hmm. virtual one. And from Vietnam, this is we, we're going to have a very Daisy. nice speaker, Miss Do or Miss Daisy Bui. She's going. She's the assistant to dean and guest lecturer of Hospitality and Tourism Institute mm -hmm. in Doi Tan University, Vietnam. She'll talk about rule of rights, yeah. message, people, and time. So we invite everyone again to join our next webinar, our 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 next general lecture for of the P2A course. ice cream. The, the webinar is open for everyone, but we do have the course for the yeah. students. Uh, students, group. partner, and yes, student yes, yeah. of us. <laughs> the, 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 the project is only for the students. Okay. okay. So if you want to join the, the project, I think you need to register. I think yes. we still give it the time for you to mm -hmm. register in the course. Okay, so finally, if there's no more questions, I would like... Okay, thank you for the speakers and the committee. Yes, thank you, Mutia. Sophia, I must say thank you. Mm -hmm. A very warm welcome. And thank you for our participant. We have participant from Yemen. Yeman. From Yemen. Uh, uh, Khadija Madina. was joining. Thank you, Khadija. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everyone. Cambodia, Philippines, Vietnam. Yes, Philippines, Vietnam. And maybe uh, almost uh, 150 That's our good. Good. participant of uh, ice cream international course, this international course. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have around 150 something for mm -hmm, the participants mm -hmm. okay so maybe you can stay tuned in whatsapp group yeah yes and check out our email yes our instagram our as instagram well. social IP media in communication the UII. IP. and okay i'm wearing the shirt of our tv actually because it's uh, somebody do you have a the unicorn YouTube Maybe. TV. <laughs> uh, this is metamorphosis. Uh, yes. Into Iconisia TV. Yeah, this is still the old one, Unicoms mm -hmm. TV. <laughs> and the Instagram is ip.communication.ue and then the Iconisia TV at Iconisia TV. You must stay tuned that yes. social media to update our information, True. our course, our webinar or our even uh, other event yeah we are also going to have an event with university of Utara malaysia of course in the thursday yes it's Kay. about cultivating value with creative, creative media. media it's also interesting uh, topic to discuss you still related with this this topic mm -hmm. and oh yeah mm -hmm. i can't wait to see the teaser of ice cream i hope it will be finished soon and it's only for the participants <laughs> in the committee right committee <laughs> participants participants <too>. if you <laughs> uh, lucky <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you everyone bye bye have a good time have a good time and stay healthy <laughs> stay safe and stay creative assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh bye bye thank you have an for eye. Thank you.